Pugs are known as mythical creatures. Who cannot laugh at this face every morning when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very social dog. Feel crazy. Pugs are the perfect breed if you want something that needs your care desperately. Small dogs, I think, generally have become hipster accessories. People get them because they're cute and little, and then discover that it's just more than they want to handle. They're unfortunately plagued by a lot of health issues, deafness, blindness, heart problems. My job at In Rescue is to get the dog to the point where I feel they are ready to move on. But if we don't have funds, we would shut down and dogs would die. They were bred to make people feel better. They're companion dogs. They're gentle and they're loving. They touch so many people's lives. You get a pug hug and you get pug kisses. The world just gets better. It just gets better. I love you. I love you. I love you. So I started Hamid's Instagram account, and when the music video for Hotline Bling by Drake came out, I did a funny video with him, and that went viral, so he kind of accidentally became famous. Right now, we have 28.6 thousand followers. He's like a local celebrity, I would say. <laughs> Helmet. So he's probably Toronto's biggest pug. Helmet the pug. That's how I feel. We've heard of Helmet, yeah. Oh my God. We love him. So cute. Oh. Hi, Helmet. We are not worthy. <laughs> Every month, we just meet up with all the pugs in Ontario. A lot of people come from two or three hours outside the city just to bring their pugs here and meet other people who love pugs. We're definitely loyal to the squishy face dogs. Yeah. And I think everyone here today is very loyal to the squishy face dogs. They are really popular. They're just really lovable pets and they're easy to train as well. The only downside is that she's going to shed all over you. But other than that, there are no downsides to pugs. No, that's right. There's no other. Pugs are just the perfect breed if you want something helpless that needs your care desperately. Some people also come even if they don't own a dog, just to meet the breed and just see what they're like. Small dogs, I think, generally have become hipster accessories. Part of the problem, I think, that's happened with pugs is they're described as couch potatoes, low energy. Some books even describe them as moderate shed. In what universe? And so when folks get a pug and then discover that, most of them can be pretty busy little lunatics until about age two or three, and they will eat until the food is gone or they explode. So you may get a couch potato, but it may be a couch potato because your dog is morbidly obese. My name is Blanche Axton, and I am the fostering coordinator for Pugalug Pug Rescue. Pugalug Pug Rescue is what's called a breed-specific rescue, which is we only take in pugs and pug mixes. And the bulk of the dogs that come to us are owner surrenders. Owners, for various reasons, aren't able to look after the dog or care for it. Hello. Hi. You can yeah. I'm Kelly. <laughs> He's going to eat for a year. Gunner was surrendered for a variety of reasons, some of them behavioral, and he hadn't worked out in other places. There's a surrender form. Perfect. These are the drop store's ears. You're supposed to have it twice a day. OK. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> have a great one. How are you, handsome? Hi.
sure everything go all right? She showed up on time and... Yeah, on time. It was, it was quite smooth. Was she pretty calm about it or upset? She was upset. She was emotional. She was just trying to keep it together. Hey. Pretty scary, huh? The tail's down. They've just come through a transport. They're in a strange place. They don't know any of these people, much less the animals. So we set it up so that if there are issues, nobody is at any risk. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let the loons out. <laughs> oh, man, you're missing a lot of fur. There you go, bub. So they stay in their foster home until they're ready to adopt, and then we post them, and we review the applications and place the dog in the home that best meets the needs of that dog. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. There we go. I have been with Pugalog for probably about 15 years. I've always kind of been a backup foster person in case they needed us. And we were full at the time when Tawny came around. Yes, Tawny likes her lammy. <laughs> I decided to help out because no one would step up for her. <laughs> Maybe I should take this away from her. Let go, let go, let, let, let go, good girl. Are you upset now? Are you mad? Sit. Good girl. Okay. Sigrid has fostered some of the great characters in our rescues. And Sigrid very much rolls with the flow. We didn't really know too much about her. We just knew she was a pug chihuahua mix. We ended up taking her to the vet down the street. They found out that she had five kidney stones and a tumor in her adrenaline gland. And her teeth were horrid. Her breath was just the worst thing you could ever smell, the poor girl. And now she has an awful bacteria, so I'm giving her shots three times a day for the next two weeks. When she first came in, we went from a eh, $5,000 bladder stone surgery to $25,000 to do all three of the surgeries. It's a lot of money. And like it or not, in rescue, you do have to spend some time thinking about, is this a good use of resources for this dog? The reason I've had her for so long is just that she had so many issues that until she was back to normal, we can adopt her out. So hopefully she'll be adopted out soon. What would happen to dogs like Tawny if we didn't have the money? You can't leave a dog with a bladder full of stones. We'd have to euthanize her. I have to say I've been quite attached to her because I've had her for so long and she's so Sassy, Tawny. Tawny, what are you doing? You want your toy? Do you want a treat? Where's the treats? Anything you say to her, this is what she does. It's very cute. Okay, zombie. Okay. Igar, sit. Good boy. Here comes the helmet. No, this is my helmet. Dogs don't have a helmet. My name's Tracy Silverthorne, and I got a pug years ago because I had to quit work because of my diabetes, and I finally could have a dog, and I picked a pug because who can not laugh at this face every morning when you wake up? My name's Sean Silverthorne, and uh, I'm, I'm the husband, so <laughs> we got dogs. <laughs> the reason I got involved with Pugalug, we've always donated, so when Pugalug put out a casting call for a film in Toronto. We answered it just on a whim, and Igor got the part. The next thing you know, we're at TIFF, and our dog's up on a screen. We had to check in under Igor Pug Dog. Igor Pug Dog and guests. 
And everybody's going, oh, we didn't know we could bring our dogs. And the answer was, no, the dog brought us. Our buddies, are you? He says, yeah. He says, I was much less gray in that picture, weren't you? You're a good boy. At the Now Magazine Breakfast Reward Shows, Miss Pickles actually got nominated for Best Instagram Account, and here she is in her red carpet gear, and yeah, we're excited. This is pretty huge. It's a big accomplishment. So she came from Pugalug Hug Rescue. She was our foster. We decided to keep her because we found her irresistible. She loves wearing outfits and we painted her nails and they're nice and pink and she doesn't even mind and she just rocks it. Pugs got really popular after Men in Black came out because there was a pug character in it named Frankie. The puppy farm started cranking out pug mixes and dogs that were really badly bred and whose early husbandry had been pretty barren. They were getting pugs with health issues, and we saw a huge increase, you know, people surrendering, often very young dogs. That's cute. We are at Off-Leaf Studio, and we are shooting a couple Instagram dog models in Canada pooch gear. We find a lot of dogs with smaller Instagram followings look up to these dogs with larger Instagram followings, and we find that they do get a lot of reach. So a helmet is a pug, and uh, pugs are pretty in right now. Yeah, he's pretty wicked. He's cool. That's cute. That's cute. Perfect. That's awesome. He actually likes being in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to put on clothes and model. Cute. Love that. And treat. How many? Treat, 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 treat. <laughs> Never it's ends. crazy, bitch. I got helmet from Jamari Pugs. They make sure that the genetic pool is very diverse. So I really wanted to make sure that I would get a healthy pug. So I, my partner and I drove up there beforehand to see how the dogs are being raised. And you go there, it's the most wonderful place in the world. Babies. <laughs> Five days old. Very squiggly. <laughs> They're getting healthy. I'm Jim Diamond. I'm Mary Lou Diamond. We have been loving and trying to produce a perfect pug for 30 years, and we're still working on it. We're getting very close. In goes mommy. And we all get a booby. <laughs> and dinner commences. <laughs> OK. Good girl. You can't breed pugs just to raise a puppy to sell. There has to be a reason behind it. And the reason is that you're trying to make a perfect pug and leave something that will look good in the future. So what you're trying to do is get all the nice traits that the standard wants on one animal. This one is very close. His tail is perfection. A pug should have a tight, curly tail, so we keep selecting the ones with a tight curly tail. So you end up more puppies that have curly tails. Any dog or any animal isn't any different than a human. They're living things and they're subject to problems. Pugs have eye issues. They well, can have eye they issues. Can. Uh, and a bit of breathing because there's no snout there. It's very short. Curly tails bring spinal problems occasionally. Toy dogs have patella problems. Like there's lots of little problems. There's been some pretty negative press about pugs. It seems to have been a bigger issue in Europe. I know Sweden, the Veterinary Association, is calling for the banning of breeding brachycephalic breeds. That's what flat-faced dogs are called, brachycephalics. Different breed associations are pushing for these, you know, really smushed in faces. And if a smushy face is cute, then smushier is cuter. And so they're always going for the more extreme, more extreme, more extreme. 
My name is Jessica Kelly and I train dogs professionally and I compete in different dog sports. That squished in nose inhibits their ability to smell and to purposefully inhibit a dog's ability to explore the world, to me, I find unethical. Pugs have massive breeding problems, ocular problems, heart problems. I'm Todd Kaufman and I'm a psychotherapist. Gracie here is trained as a therapy dog and we both specialize in high level anxiety. We don't need to create animals that will suffer for our aesthetic pleasure. And I'm not always popular because I'm not prepared to slag all breeders, but I, I do think we need to keep our eye on health and temperament. They have value, they're not for everybody, they require care. So when dogs come into foster care, we refer to it as the rule of three. First three days a dog is in my house, I pay attention to it, but it doesn't tell me that that's what the dog is like, because it's shock and trying to figure out where they are and, and where they fit. First three weeks are what I call the honeymoon. Usually by the three month mark, I'm beginning to see the real dog. Watching Gunner in the first five to six weeks, you would think, man, what a well-behaved dog. What he was, was shut down. And I suspect he's been punished for a lot of things. As he's gotten more comfortable, we've started to see some of the behavior issues. So I tend to encourage our rescue to hang on to dogs for a minimum of eight weeks, so that if there is stuff that shows up later, we've seen it. What are you doing? Are we waiting for Dr. Mason? Yeah? Are we gonna get a checkup? Yeah? Want to sit for me? Sit. Sit. We've been hit hard in the last 12 to 18 months. We've had a rash of high-need medical dogs. It, it does tend to be the number one reason people surrender to us is illness, vet care. And sometimes the dog really needs to be euthanized and they can't bring themselves to do it. Hi, Tony. Tony, can say hello. Yeah. Come on in. All right. Come on, bye-bye. So today is pretty much just to make sure she doesn't have any more infections, right? Yeah, we'll yeah. ultrasound and culture her again. Hopefully everything is still gonna be clear. Yeah, so. it would be great, wouldn't it? Yes. For once. Most people aren't really interested in having a dog who's at high medical needs. We need to ask Dr. Mason some hard questions. Is this dog ever gonna be adoptable? If she is ever gonna be adoptable, what are adopters looking at? Hi, be that. Hello, be that. <laughs> so everything looks good. Um, there are two little stones in the bladder right now. So, oh. but they're only a couple of millimeters. So they're not anything I'm worried about until we kind of get an idea whether there's an infection there. So I will call you in a few days about the culture results, and then we can kind of decide where do we go from there. Okay. All righty. Without a word of a lie, I was crushed that she had had stones back again because, you know, people were interested in adopting her. So it was really a heartbreaking situation. And I feel for her, right? You know what I mean? It's like, how many times are they going to have to operate on this poor girl? She's had four major operations. That's a lot. All right, Peanut. Yes, I know. We're very excited. Very excited. There was a kind of a collective email. Oh, crap from the board when I emailed to say, just so you know, Tawny's got stones again. It's a cost of care. It's a cost of care. Yeah, really. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I would say in terms of our costs, the last 12 to 18 months have been staggering. We don't get government help, and we get all our money from donations and fundraising. Without the funding, we would shut down, and dogs would die. I could never do what the foster people do and what the pug rescue people do. I'm too soft-hearted. You have to be a special type of person that can bring a dog into your home that has health needs. I'm not that type of person, but I can make the money.
I decided that I wanted to give back to Pugalug, and that's how I started the very first calendar. I started out originally printing, I think, 50 of them. We've now grown to 500 units. We sold out last year, and we sold out the year before. It's progressed, and the expectations keep getting higher and higher. There's a lot of zombie fans out there now, so I'm hoping it takes another big jump. It's hard work printing calendars, isn't it? Is it hard work? Does mom work you too hard? I like it out there. <laughs> Come on, BBs. There you go. They would be considered ready to adopt at eight weeks, so it's a couple more weeks, but we normally keep them until they're closer to 10. But they're all weaned, and they're doing quite well. Their tails are nice and high. They're gonna be gorgeous. We're not in it to make a lot of money. And artistically, I'm in it to make a perfection. That's the name of the game. I would say I'm very close, and a year and a half will put me at 81. There gets to be a time when you have to decide, I think I've done all I can do for the breed, and I have to slow down. Come here, little Here he comes. Come on. Here he goes. Come on. The winner. I think they're you? all nice. Huh? Maybe we'll have to keep them all, eh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'd never had a dog growing up, and I first became infatuated with the breed, I think from Men in Black. Then yeah. when I found this pug lover, it was meant to be. <laughs> Not only did I want to get a pug, but I had everything all worked out yeah. in my head already. I knew the name, I knew what he was going to be like. I had this voice in my head that was his voice, kind of like a bricklayer from Queens. Like, hey, you guys want to go play stickball? I knew his name, it was going to be Robert Loja, uh, not named after the actor, but named after a little bit in Family Guy. We just needed something that's a little bit easier to say, so it became Arlo. Like J-Lo. Like J-Lo. <laughs> He was a puppy, buddy. That was you when you were just Looked three like days old. Do you recognize yourself? <laughs> you're so tiny. And now you're 25 pounds of love. It's kind of hard for us to share any kind of intimate moment <laughs> without him making his presence known or trying to get in between it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that side of things. It's amazing we managed to make a baby. Literally the first book I bought when I got pregnant was a book about what to do to ensure that the transition is a smooth one. This is Arlo yeah. when he went running through the mud. He looks so derpy. No, you took so... so many. Yeah, did you ever wonder why his Instagram is so amazing? I don't know why he eats so much mud. Well, that mud smelled like poop. Did it smell like cat poo? Because that's his favorite thing to eat. We'll have to keep him away from dirty diapers when the baby's here. Yeah. I don't even know. Is that a thing? Probably. Do dogs like eating human dirty diapers? I believe so, yeah. Well, because like, especially if you breastfeed. Hi, hi. Oh, my goodness. Look at this guy. Oh, you got some friends here. Hey. You want to go to the business? Come here. Can you walk a little bit? He's usually pretty stiff in the mornings. Should we go get some breakfast? Come on. <laughs> Titus, come on. Let's go have some breakfast. Come on. <laughs> Might just be a carrying day. <laughs> Little Prince uh, sits right there. We gotta keep him really flush because he's prone to urinary tract infections. Because he's so food motivated, we're able to put like a whole lot of water in with his meals, and that just kind of keeps him flushed out. He takes four pills in the morning too. So there's a painkiller in there, a cranberry capsule, and uh, vitamin C. <gasps> I've got something special for you. Good boy. 
At the moment, he's a little bit high needs because he has a breed-specific degenerative disease, and he's catheterized three times a day. That began three years ago. He was sort of in a decline, and we definitely thought that we were gonna lose him. The vet taught me how to do it to make him more comfortable until we put him down. And then he got better. And then he just kind of kept making improvements in terms of levels of comfort and mobility. So we didn't put him down, but the catheterizing continued. He comes with me everywhere because nobody else is really willing to do that or go near that, including my partner. So for three years, like Titus and I have not been separated for more than like a good 10 hours. So I've brought him to like the States with me and out West, and I have not traveled internationally since this has happened, which has been a struggle. Okay, you're ready for your breakfast. Sometimes he'll fall, so I just kind of put a cushion behind his bum. There you go, bud. When we were first together, we started adopting dogs. I knew nothing about them, because I grew up in a high rise. Um, and as you can see, I've settled in the canine life quite uh, comfortably. Not that he had a choice. <laughs> I think he really knew what he was in for on some levels, but I also didn't expect him to share the work. It's my gig. Hey, Gun. Mr. Gimpy Face. Gunner will take a piece of my heart. Most of my foster dogs do. There's no nasty in him, but he lacks some skills in terms of dog-to-dog -dog interactions. He's learning them, largely because my dogs can teach it. My dogs are brilliant with foster dogs. And they do as much of the healing and the behavior retraining as I do. So I'm thinking I'm going to take Gunny to Citania, a canine mm -hmm. wellness, because the limp is not getting any better. It goes away if I um, give him the anti-inflammatory, but as soon as the anti-inflammatory stops, it comes back. You're still limping, pal, huh? What you want to see is to get him to the point where he can go to a home with the understanding that this guy is probably never gonna be okay in a big group of dogs he doesn't know. You know, he's, he's missed the boat on some things that I can't reinstall. He is also one of the sweetest dogs I've ever fostered. All right, you guys need to go outside. There you go. Okay, who's helping me put this up? Igor. Could you get, hi bud, <laughs> thanks. I think that's, is that straight? I'm one of those retail girls. It was just ingrained in me, you set yourself a goal. So my husband and I decided to get a few friends from the surrounding area that wanted to come down and hang out together and we would sell the calendars the first time. So I nicknamed it the pee party because that's pretty much all they did is come and pee on everything. Okay, We're gonna put this, no, just straight here. Are you good? Yep. Okay. And then we'll put the table there, and then the plates can go on it here. Gone. We do a silent auction, and sometimes it can be pretty tense, because if the weather doesn't cooperate on a pee party, you're standing there in the morning looking, going, oh my god. I'm really hoping it doesn't rain. There's not much we can do, and there's like six tents up there. So the only thing is, is the silent auction items that might get wet. Oh, do we have? Rain takes money away. <laughs> there's no two ways about it. Rain is going to dampen the goals that I set for the party. Radar looks kind of rough right now. Yeah. This year, we scored. The heavens didn't open up completely, so it was like, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Everybody's coming in the door with their dogs.
Pugs are known as mythical creatures. <laughs> they have special powers, you know. <laughs> they have the ability to convince you to turn over your roast beef sandwich to them. They just hypnotize you. <laughs> you fall for it every time. <laughs> The pugs didn't seem to mind when it did sprinkle, and we had another fabulous day for pug rescue. I did reach my goal for that day. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. You ready? Ready, Daddy. and go. Fast, 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 fast. We've got an on again, off again, right hind leg limp. So I'm taking him to see a woman who's a canine physiotherapist. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, first two steps. Yeah, that's interesting. My name is Tanya Costa and I do canine rehabilitation. Much like a physiotherapist in the human world, I do in the dog and cat world. So what we want to look at is placement. So that's nice, front leg is up, but the back left, he's not extending here. Look at that, yeah. there's no muscle there either. If we look at the other leg, see how far back that goes, that yep. hip? Okay, and now let's go and see what he feels like. Okay. Good boy. So when I'm working with a rescue, or especially a foster dog, I'm a little bit more cautious about how I'm handling them. What I want you to do is just relax. Okay. Come on, gun. So I'm gonna check range of motion of this hip. Oh, yeah, he's stressing out a bit, he's had enough. I want you to hold the harness in his head because if this is reactive, he will definitely let me know. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Iliopsoas is basically the groin. It's not just a muscle, it's a group of muscles. Right. Okay. And that's where I poked and he didn't like it much. Are you gonna still be my friend? It's all right, I won't do that again. I promise, I promise I won't touch it again. Okay, see where my hand is? I'm gonna get you to try it. And you're gonna bring the treat forward and get him to stretch like he's doing. Like that, good boy. See his back go? Yep. That's all the epaxial, hypaxial muscles, good. So what that's doing is stretching here and here for you. So no crate rest or anything like that. That's the worst thing you can do. Um, but you wanna keep him moving, yeah. But you know that, you've learned yep. that over the years. Hey, Bub Bub. I know, but you're a very good boy. Hey, that was hard. Nice. Gunner, I think, is probably gonna be quite adoptable. He's gonna be one of the ones where I probably take him to his permanent home and then sit in my car and cry. <laughs> Only because he's been a fair bit of work, he's got some issues, and it's often the dogs that really require all your skills and all your abilities that are the hardest to let go. But it's the gig. There's a wonderful poem about fostering that I wish I could find, but it talks about my job is, is for you to break my heart. Because I let you go. And then another dog comes and, and takes up that space. It's a hard job. People don't realize how hard fostering is. A lot of people right now ask me why I haven't considered, you know, euthanasia for him just because his back legs don't work, but because he still kind of seems like he gets so much out of life. Like he's so spunky and he loves car rides and being around people and food and that just sort of seemed like an indication to me that he wanted to be around. I was sitting over on that bench with a friend and we were talking, I had Titus on my lap, a train went by, Titus got up and ran. Oh shit, go get it, go get it. <laughs> The guy just looked over at me and he's like, haven't you been carrying this dog around for eight months? I was just like, I can't believe I've seen this. And I guess like when adrenaline kicks in and muscle memory gets going, he's capable of walking. We've just kind of made it a repeat of coming down here and getting them all charged up for the trains. And uh, I think it's helped. One of his uh, life's joys. 
He is so pleased with himself. <laughs> Did you get it? Good boy. Let's go. Go home and get a drink. Come on. So Tony is on the agenda again? Yeah, Tony is on the agenda <laughs> again. Um, the bad news is Tony has bladder stones again. Dr. Mason says this is probably going to be an ongoing issue. <clears throat> she is going to be high maintenance. She's going to need regular appointments with Dr. Mason. She's going to need regular ultrasounds. I'm somewhat hesitant to put her up for adoption for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. She's costly, yep. potentially, yeah. for an yeah. owner. I mean, you know, to us having spent, yeah. you know, between twenty and twenty-five thousand on her surgeries, it's oh, about two thousand dollars, but it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But most people are going to go holy hand. Yeah. So I am proposing she stay with Sigrid. It's essentially forever in foster care, and yeah. Lord knows yeah. Sigrid's really committed to her. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I weren't at the bylaw limit, I would adopt her in a New York sack. She's a she's a sassy bitch. So <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to have kisses from you now that your teeth are fixed. I know. Personally, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm thrilled because I get, I get to keep her and stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm worried, right? Because is this ever going to end for her? These constant visits. Not that she doesn't love Dr. Mason because she's very happy going there. We take in dogs that sometimes cost some money. And, I mean, we, we certainly have gotten some flack that we've spent the money on her as opposed to euthanizing her. How do you euthanize that? She's a happy, busy, happening little girl. The board just couldn't bring themselves to euthanize her simply because she was going to be expensive. So we're at Camp Canine. It's a safe place for us to do outdoor events, in particular, this one, which is called the running of the pugs. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of typical of our events. There's lots of people, lots of pugs, and a lot of running around, and hopefully nobody getting peed on, but that's happened too. Over the last couple of years, this is also the event where Tracy Silverthorne presents her donation to our rescue. Well, every year I kind of set myself a goal. I wasn't sure about this year, so we ended up having another party. That raised $1,300, so. Yeah, impressive. Igor Zombie, Sean, and all of our community in London would like to present Pugalog Rescue $10,000. That's a big chunk of change. It's a whole bunch of spays and neuters. It's a ton of inoculations. Expect the most disorganized dog race you've ever seen. There is no guarantee everybody will run in a straight line or even towards the finish line. Thank you. Gunner's issues, the limp is still there. It almost has an arthritis feel to it. I took him to do a whole series of x-rays to see whether he's got a hip issue. I mean, you know that his hips are bad when I walk into the x-ray room, my vet puts the x-ray up and I go, oi! I was really angry. I was really angry. Irresponsible breeding pisses me off. And that's what this is. Come here, gun. Good boy. 
to look at him ripping around my house in my backyard, you wouldn't say, oh, that dog's got terrible hip dysplasia. So yeah, I have to say, when we saw the x-rays, I was pretty discouraged. <laughs> he lives in constant pain. But dogs are very stoic. You don't let on that you're not in great shape. And he's likely never known anything except this. But those hips didn't come from injury. They didn't come from poor owner care. That's genetic. It's what comes from, you know, cranking out puppies for money and not doing due diligence. All right, you guys done? Let's go. I wonder how many other people have dogs from this backyard breeder. And this isn't a cheap fix, right? So we're going to pay for their bad breeding. It's kind of what rescues do, sadly. We're going to see a surgeon on Monday, and she'll let us know what our options are. Hi. They're man's best friend, and they've become my best friend other than my husband. You come in the back door, and you're feeling like crap. And there's two pug dogs. How do you stay crappy? How do you feel horrible? You can't. You get a pug hug and you get pug kisses. The world just gets better. It just gets better. They're fairly remarkable beings. Way smarter than we give them credit for. They don't make judgments or assess your value based on what you look like, where you came from. They are the manifestation of joy on four legs. It's hard to not be a bit in awe of that way of being in the world. That's the definition of the crazy dog lady right there. <laughs> <laughs>